This isn't about noble houses. This is about the living and the dead. Then I intend to stay amongst the living. Let the Stark boy and his new queen defend the North. We stay here where we've always been. I made a promise. Our child will rule Westeros. Our child will never be born if the dead come south. In season seven of Game of Thrones, the residents of Westeros are facing an existential threat from an army of the dead that is steadily marching south for total war, which would likely end with the extinction of mankind. But some characters are content to ignore that threat and focus on internal politics instead. Sound familiar? Many viewers and bloggers are seeing the blockbuster HBO show as making a statement, using the White Walkers as an analogy for climate change. I think they may be on to something. So how will we face the zombie horde? Sorry, I mean catastrophic climate change. My guest knows a lot about both Nikolai Coster Waldo, Game of Thrones star, activist, and goodwill ambassador for the UN Development Program. Thank you so much for being here, even though we uh, on this end wish you were in DC. Well, it's great to be here. <laughs> so you, first of all, let's, uh, if you could explain for those who don't know, um, what is the UN Development Program? Well, it's it's uh, it's it's basically the biggest uh, help organization in the world, and of course, it's it's ours. It's it's every countries in the world. We, we have, they have offices all over, and they they do help everywhere. Um, they do help here in the U.S. Of course, they do help um, you know where help is needed. And, and do you sort of agree with the analogy of sort of the, you know, we, we use the White Walkers analogy for sort of the way that people treat climate change. It's this existential threat that's out there somewhere well, far away I, I, and people can sort of put it off and not deal with it and try to deal with what's in front of them. Yeah, I mean, but I think the good thing is that now we're at a point where you can't deny it. It's kind of like in the show. Um, everybody knows it's, it's happening and climate change is real. and. Uh, We've made amazing progress. I mean, a few years ago, the, the Paris Agreement uh, was such a milestone. You have the whole world except two, now, of course, maybe three countries. But everyone is it's behind this. And understand that if we don't act, uh, it will have catastrophic consequences for all of us and f uh, for the future. Um, so, uh, I mean, the funny thing is, I remember as a kid, uh, I grew up in, in, in Europe, in Denmark, and the threat of, of nuclear war was a big thing. I remember my, my mom taking me to these demonstrations. So we've always known that, that man is, is able to do horrible things. The threat now is even greater, because uh, we know it's going to get really bad. And we also know if we don't do something, uh, it's going to get catastrophic. And, and, you know, you say everybody agrees with it, but, you know, the president of the United States doesn't agree with it. I mean, he no, was asked I, after all of the catastrophic hurricanes in Caribbean, in the Caribbean and the hit Texas, if it's changed his view of climate change. And he said, no, he's about to address the U.N. What would you say to him to try to say, you know, to, to sort of address that skepticism? I think, you know, you know, he, he this is he's the president and he, he, he ran on, on that and then he, he's just following through on his promise. The, that's fine. The great thing about, I mean, I thought it was, I think it's a mistake to pull out of the Paris Agreement. I think it's a, a grave mistake. What I thought, if you want to look at the positives, the, the re reaction from the rest of the world was amazing. You had the biggest country, in China, India, just stepping up to the place, and we're going to do even more. You had the, the mayors of some of the ma major cities in, in the U.S. stepping up and saying, we're going to do more. You had the California, the biggest polluter in the U.S., saying, we're going to go even further. So uh, this is not about one man. Uh, it's not even about one country. It's about the whole world. This is a global problem. Um, and yes, uh, you know, obviously, I, I, you know, I would hope that the president will listen to the overwhelming sign, scientific uh, proof that this is. It's not even a question if, if it's yeah. happening. It's it's a, it's about how bad is it going to get. Yeah. And our countries, you know, do you think that the world, even though you know most people do agree that climate change is real? people doing enough to prepare for its effects? I mean, we saw the Caribbean get devastated, and there's different levels of preparation. Are people preparing for sort of the worst of the worst that could happen if the results of climate change as they kick in? I think we have to do a lot more. And I think that, because uh, what we see now is a little appetizer. Uh, and I know some people say, well, we've always, it's just weather. We've always had weather. And it's true, we've always had bad weather. But this is, is, is happening much more frequent, and it's going to get much more uh, extreme. 
Um, there's not enough we can do. Um, this is like we're going to have to take out the biggest insurance policy we can. <laughs> and we all have to, I mean, that's the thing about the UNDP and my work there. It's, it's, it is a global thing and mm -hmm. everyone has to take part in the solution. Yeah. And, you know, there's always a, there's a faction of people who say, you know, Nikolai, you're a celebrity, you're an actor, stay in your lane. Why are you branching outside of the entertainment world to talk about issues that may upset me? Why, why, why you know, how do you answer people who say that? Well, just, just, uh, yeah, I get it. I know it. I have the same feeling sometimes, uh, trust me. But the thing is, it's, it's not, I'm just trying to, to inspire people to go and, and seek out information themselves. I don't know a lot, you know. I just know that looking at the science that I've read, I'm convinced that this is truly uh, something we have to deal with. So please go and educate yourself. Go to UNDP.org, uh, go to globalgoals.com, educate yourself. Yeah. Well, uh, Nikolai Costawaldo, what a treat uh, it has been to talk to you. Thank you so much. And I will tell the audience, do not miss Nikolai today as part of the Social Good Summit. Uh, it's going to be streaming live at socialgoodsummit.com slash live, which is going to be at 5.45 p.m. Eastern. You can also follow the conversation at, uh, on Twitter at hashtag 2030 now. Thank you, Nikolai, so much for being here. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Have a great day. You too. All right. More AMJ after the break. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.